Hi everyone, David Maley here and you're back now for part two of this uh, awesome series. It's a two-part series on using multiple logistic regression to go and see if we can predict coronavirus outcomes from uh, hospital data from New York City. So uh, we, in the previous uh, video, we went and looked at um, loading the data, loading all the uh, correct libraries we needed, you know, massaging the data, exploring the data, and then looking at the predictors. We did it through both the random forest and through the Baruta method, which is what this image is over here to the right. So in this video, uh, let's get this off of here. Let's bring up, if I can, uh, try to bring this up. There we go. To this guy. Let's highlight it so you guys can see what's going on here. And uh, what I want to do is I want to show you um, all the different steps here to make this happen. So first we're going to start with the logistic models. Okay, so let's do this. Let's open this up like this. And I'm going to take this. This is uh, called the GLM function. We do this on for a logistic model on the outcome. Remember, that's the field we want to look at, the outcome field. And we're going to look at all the other fields in here, right? So, not necessarily, but I've got age, smoke, COPD, married, college grad, and sex, right? I took out number because number doesn't matter. That's just the number of the, of the row, and that has no bearing on anything. So, what we want to do is this, and then you have family equals binomial, link equals logit. And if you do that, that'll give you the logistic model. So, we just run that, just like this. It's pretty quick. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get the predictions and score it back to the original data set so we can see what we're looking at. So, you know, what was the original outcome and that we had that was determinant? And then how did we come out with our training and our uh, predictions? So what we want to do is we're going to first do this. See this row right here? We're going to predict based on the, logis the logistic model we just created on the, our original test data, right? So we have test data on the original data frame. Then we had a training data and a test data. So we're going to predict on the test data, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to put this into the data frame called predicted. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that predicted and we're going to put that into a column on the test data that's going to be called predicted, okay? Then we're done with that. So we could actually do that right here if we wanted to. And uh, so next, you got to determine, do you have a big data set or a small data set? In this case, we have a small data set, so I don't need to do a cutoff. But if I did, I could do a optimal cutoff, which will increase your accuracy possibly depending on the data that you have. But being that I have, you know, around 1,000 rows, I'm not going to do it. It's not necessary here. If I wanted to do that, I would do this right here, which is uh, using the library, the inf information value, um, Actually, let me show it to you like this. It might be easier to see it. And so the library would be information value, and we'd use the optimal cutoff on the uh, data frame, which in this case would be outcome, and uh, then uh, predicted based on that. That's exactly how that would work. Well, let's go and do this. I don't need that here. And we're going to comment this out. And then we're going to go on to step four, right? So step three, we don't really need here. Step four would be the analysis of the logistic regression model and our test of our fit, right? So first thing we're going to look at is our coefficients. Okay, we're going to get our p-values. Are they in line or are they not? Are they huge, which means right off the get-go, we're not going to be able to predict anything. Or are they okay? So let's do this. we got model summary. So we're going to use the summary function on the logistic model to get our model summary. And then we're going to look at the coefficients of that. So let's do this. And there's our coefficients. The most important value here is our p-value. And you can see right here that they are these numbers in scientific notation to the negative 6, which means they're very small, which is good. Okay. So basically the rule with uh, p-values is you want them to be 0 0.05 and below. If they're huge, like they're above um, 1,000 or something like that, then you're going to have very low or poor uh, results. Okay. So next, we want to do, we've looked at that, we want to do another test. We're going to look at our AIC and PIC values, okay? So actually, the p-values, if they're at 1, they're not good. The uh, AIC and BIC values, you want them to be as low as possible, and they're a poor fit if they're over 1,000. So we're going to run them both here, AIC and BIC functions. Run that, and on our data, the logistic model, right? We're not running on the original data frame. We're running on the 
logistic model that we just built up above. So we do this, and we've got 746 and 781. So they're not, you know, really low, like a 60 or a 100, which would be really good. Tell me I've got great uh, accuracy that's going to result out of this. But they are below 1,000, so they're not a great fit. They're an eh kind of fit. And if they were over 1,000, as I noted right here in the notes above, then they'd be a very poor fit. So they're not going to be an extremely poor fit, but they're not going to be a great fit. So you're somewhere in between. Okay? Now, test the graph and the model. So we've already got that. So next what we're going to do is we're going to use the library ggplot2. You can also use that from up above. We already loaded that in. Um, in one of the libraries we had above, but you could do it here if you wanted to and just library ggplot2. And then you just use this ggplot, where we're going to plot the outcome and our main one, which is age, you could also plot it against COPD, that's fine. Uh, and then you add the geom point and stat smoothing method equals GLM because we're using logistic regression and SE equals false. So if I do that, and hit enter, I come up with this. Now that's not a very telling graph right there. It just tells us, you know, if we had uh, too much in one side, than another in one uh, column, though it's pretty evenly distributed there. Okay, so we're just looking. Does it make sense? Is it skewed? So as we did earlier. So now we're going to plot the training data, right? So we're going to take. Remember, we created a training set and a test data set. So we're going to use the training data, right? And we're going to use this par m fro equals c one comma one, which means I want just one graph. If I had c comma four comma four or two comma two, two comma two would give me four graphs. You'd have four and you'd have the smaller graphs if I want to do that. I don't want to do that here. It's on one graph. So I've got one comma one. I'm going to do plot, outcome, and outcome versus age. Data is the training data, right? So I hit that, hit enter. I get this. This is very telling because this tells me I have uh, deaths, but they grow. They're lower in the lower age range and they're higher in the higher age range. Doesn't that make sense with what we've been seeing on TV? Um, and the survival rate is much greater for the people in the lower end than the people on the higher end. Okay, so if somebody 100 years old gets, uh, you know, uh, coronavirus, it's not going to be very good for them. Uh, very hard disease for someone to have. And if you have it or you know someone did, I, you know, I wish you the best. Um, again, this is just a learning exercise. It's not to make fun or or poke fun at, at, in any way at this disease that's going on. This is just a learning exercise to teach people logistic regression and to see if we could, based on hospital data, determine if uh, the outcomes. Okay, that's all the purpose of this is. So now uh, we've done that. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the significance with an ANOVA test, which is the analysis of the variance, okay? And let's see what that says. So that's this right here, ANOVA logistic model, which we created above, test equals chi-squared. So let's do that. And that'll tell you right here, same thing as we saw earlier. Remember, we were looking at the predictors, which was are important. So same thing down here again. We've got age is the most important. It's got three stars. See how it goes here? You could have three stars, two stars, one star, a dot, and then a space, right? Space is your lowest. So you've got three stars, one star for COPD that agrees fully with what we found in the Baruta method. And then we've also got smoke and sex also in here as lower determinants, very low, but they're better than nothing. And um, so let's go through this. So next we want to look at a histogram to see the possibility of the outcomes, right? So the histogram would be right here. This long piece of code right here could probably actually bring that over there, but let's just do this. Same thing, logistic model, fitted values, main is histogram, that's your main title, and the X label is the probability of death survived outcomes, right? Because what we have those two, and the color is light green. So let's do that, and then let's bring it over here. The problem, the reason why I got an error there is it was too small to run it. Now there it shows. So sometimes when you put the screen too small, it'll just give you an error like you saw down here. So we got the histograms right here, probability of death tells you. So there's probably a little bit more. You can see it's it's a pretty good standard distribution, except a little bit more down here. So what that means is death and survive. So there's a little bit more death that occurred than survival that occurred, but they're close. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we want to take this data and we're going to take the new column. We're going to create a new column called class on the original data set. And we're going to score this back to it. 
Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this right here, and we're going to predict the, logis the logistic model on test data one, which is our original data, right? So we're not new it now on the test data or the training data. We're doing test data one, which is our original data that we originally read in, right? And uh, we're going to link it in there, and then we use the header of that. So let's do this. And that shows me what's going in there, the prediction values, okay? And then what I want to do is I told you I want to create a new column called class, so test data one dollar sign class, if else prediction greater than zero for death or survived, right? So I want to see did they die or did they survive? So we're going to do that. Let's run that. You make sure you, you get all the letters in that when you run that. If the T wasn't in there the first time, that would error out. So now we've done that. Now what I want to do is anywhere where there's outcome equals not infected, I don't want to show that. And the reason being is they were not uh, in the hospital for reasons related to coronavirus or COVID-19. They were in there for auto accidents, cancers, a note here, it could be anything. So we're going to remove those. So how do you remove those? Use filter function right here. Test data one, comma, outcome not equals. See how you have that uh, exclamation mark equals, then not infected. So by doing that, that removes that. Then what we want to do is I want to look at the last 15 rows, right? The last 15 rows of the data. I could look at the first 15 rows, too. It doesn't matter. But in this case, I'm doing that. And tail gives me the last six, right? So how do I get tail to give me the last 15? I just change it. So right here, I've got tail. And then I've got, I would normally just have tail and test data two in there. I've got tail, test data two, and then I've got 15. So I did that, and test data two is what results from this with the filter, right? So if I did test data one, I've got the not infecteds in there. So test data two means I'm not changing test data one, but I'm removing the not infected. So let's do that, and then we use the cable just like we did earlier to show it striped in a better way. So let's do that. We're almost done here, and wait till you see what we can find here. So let's do this. So now we got, we've got original, this is the tail, right, of our data. And we've got the outcome, and then we've also got the class next to it. So let's see how good this looks. If we just look at it right off the bat, we've got survive, survive, that's one match. Survive, survive, two matches. Survive, death, that's not a match. That's not a match. That's a match. Three matches. Four matches. Five matches right there. Six matches. Seven matches. Eight matches, right? So we've got eight matches, eight matches out of 15, right, is what we're seeing right there. So now uh, that we've done that, let's take a look at our accuracy. So even though we can look at it here, that's not the whole picture. We're just seeing eight out of 15 in the end of the data, the last 15 rows. Let's look at it for all rows. So what I want to do is I want to take this, which is the sum of the outcome, and where I want to see the sum of the outcome where it equals the class. See what I'm saying? So I want where they both, I want to count where they're equal to. That's going to go into this data frame called matches. Then I'm going to take the overall count of the entire data frame of test data two and put that in total. See it right here. And then I'm going to have this where matches divided by total times 100. That gives you your accuracy. So let's do this. Let's run this whole thing. And then if I just take accuracy by itself, I've got a, I'm running basically out of all the data, all the rows I have in test data to, I'm running a 43% accuracy. That's not great. That's So if you look at this down below here, I have a summary written up of this. And basically what we're looking at here is it's a great start. What you just saw was how to use logistic uh, model regression. Um, but the problem here is, is that we have a small sample, right? We only had about a thousand rows and we have a very biased sample, right? So even though we can look and see, we've got three different outcomes, right? They were not infected, they uh, survived or they died. But the problem is, is that you have a lot of people that didn't go to the hospital. You have a lot of people that stayed at home, that survived at home. You also have a lot of outside factors that were not taken into account here that could happen. Like maybe their temperature was higher in some of these people when they came in. It could be anything. Uh, maybe they waited too long and came in more severe at certain age ranges. That could be too. That could skew the data. So the problem here is it's, it, it's a good start, a great way to learn, but in this case the data is not where we'd want it to be to really determine anything. Um, it's a fun example. But to be honest with you, flipping coins would actually, so 
right? We're at 43% accuracy. If we flipped a coin, it would be at about 51%. I know you're saying, oh, wait, we're at 50% if we flip a coin, right? You only got two outcomes, heads or tails. Well, the problem is, as you know, is if you take a coin, a quarter, right? You look at it, you got a head on one side and tail on the other. If you really weigh one side versus the other, there's a little minimal difference between the two, and the head weighs more than the tail. So the key takeaway here for that one is that uh, if you were to flip a coin, it would come up heads a little bit more than it would come up tails. So it would be about 51% if you picked heads and about 49% if you picked tails. In either case, you'd be more accurate than this at 43%. So we don't want to use this to predict if somebody's going to survive or not. It's just not that accurate. But, you know, it depends on the data you're using. So in this case, these numbers uh, were skewed towards sicker patients, and there's a lot of conflicting data in there, possibly smokers, non-smokers, um, you know, high morbidity rates, hospital, uh, could be other things going on. Maybe they're misreported. I don't know. Misreported as to the type of death it was. It could be anything. All right, but anyway, you got to see how we do logistic regression in data science. We took an interesting data set to determine, you know, how what is the outcome of these people, and um, it was an interesting experience. So, thanks again for watching. I hope you found something interesting here, and I hope you learned something interesting. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. We're gonna have a lot of great videos like this coming out where you can teach or you can learn to predict things. And, and take you know what's going on in the marketplace, whether it be stock price forecasting, uh, pandemics like the coronavirus, COVID-19 thing going on, or other various uh, interesting data sets, and do some really cool stuff with it. So thanks again for watching. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share, and have a, and be sure and click that bell too, because that way you'll get notified every time I have a new interesting video like this. Thanks again, and have a great day.